Hello and welcome to Blossom Sandwich Sews. My name is Yvette and today we're talking about making mummy and me coordinating outfits. So some of you are probably saying, hold up, you don't have any kids. And no, they're mummy and me outfits. So I'm making coordinating outfits for myself and my mum. So the story here is that my mum has decided that she wants to do some modelling. So I'm just going to throw that out there. If anyone runs a pattern company and they want a 50 something size 8 to 10 blonde model, my mum's really up for it. Very keen. Anyway, so my mum wants to do some modelling and I saw on Instagram that a lot of companies are hosting a catwalk for the Stitch Festival, which is at the Business Design Centre in London in March. So... I just saw a post and commented on it and then they said uh, do you actually want to do it so basically now my mother and I are now going to be walking the fabric godmother catwalk together in our coordinating outfits so I was really really fortunate and very grateful that Naomi from fabric godmother got in touch and said do you want us to send you the fabric so let's get into it let me show you what they sent me So here's my lovely parcel. I have already opened it, so I've had my sneak peek, but I'll show you. So the concept is that we are going to have the same outfit, so the same pattern, the same fabric, but in two different colorways. So this is my mum's fabric that she's chosen. So it's quite a kind of burgundy red with pink bows, like a ribbon all over it. And then my colorway is the green colorway here it is so that's this is going to be us walking down the catwalk in our matching outfits what do you think and then they also printed the pattern for me so each project's in a little bundle like this which is really cute and the pattern of course is the fabric godmother peony so i haven't made this pattern before so it's going to be quite interesting to test out the fitting process for both me and for my mum because we're not the same body type so that's going to be really interesting i am hoping that because there's loads and loads of darts in this pattern that that will help with the fitting so they printed out two copies of the pattern so one that's in my size range and a smaller size range for my mum so i'm gonna do some twirls and yeah let you know how i get on with the process of that i think my my mum's going to need some adjustments because she's even smaller than me. My mum's five foot nothing. I'm a fi only five foot two. So that'll be interesting. Hopefully this fabric is not too painful to sew with because it's very shiny. It's not slippery on the inside. So maybe that will help. Um, I might need to put some, I don't know, paper in between the layers and cut it on the flat and stuff. So I'm going to go to Hobbycraft to pick up some supplies. So I'm lucky that I've got Hobbycraft just down the road and I like to go there for thread so that I can actually hold it against the swatch of the fabric and make sure that it does properly match because it's really hard to do that online. So I need to get some thread, I need to get some invisible zips and I need to get some, what was the other thing? Oh, Microtex needles because I was suggested that I should use Microtex with this fabric in case um, of pulls. So I need to go to the shop and I've got my list set up in my stash hub. So yeah, I'll let you know how I get on at Hobbycraft. So I'm at the shop. I'm just first starting out by choosing a thread match for my fabric. I've just brought a tiny swatch and I like to just separate out one thread and put it against the fabric to see that it does blend in from a distance. I was recommended to use Microtex needles, but they're branded, so I just got some sharps. Next up, I've got to look for a zip. So I found quite a good match for the pink, but they didn't have any green zips there. Luckily, I've got a zip of the right length, but in black, which I found in my stash hub. So I'm just going to try and insert it really invisibly so you can't see that it doesn't match. Now it's time to pre-wash the fabric. I always pre-wash my fabric before cutting and sewing because washing can sometimes shrink fabric and I don't want it to shrink after I've put all the work into fitting and sewing. I always use colour catchers with my Me Maids and also Woolite because it's nice and gentle for viscose fabric. 
Right, so in the meantime, let's get this fabric uploaded to my Stash Hub. So this is the web version. I'm just copying the URL of the listing of that fabric and pasting it in to Magic Input, which is a super speedy way to upload to Stash Hub. They sent me four meters of each fabric, which I'm super, super grateful for. So now I've clicked Submit and I'm leaving Magic Input to do its great work. In the meantime, I'm going to pop over to the other tab where I've got up the pink version of this fabric for my mum. So I'm ready to paste that in when this one is all loaded in. So here we go, there's the picture, it's extracted the description, and then it's got all the details of like the dimensions, the fabric type, all the, everything that's in the listing, it's sort of pulled out and put into the right fields. And I can also check off the gifted box, which I don't get to use very much. So it's very, very exciting for me. So now same again for my mum's fabric, just paste in the URL. I've got four meters of that as well. So click submit and it's exactly the same. I find that the magic input is so much quicker than typing it all out myself. So I really appreciate it. And I tend to buy most of my fabric online anyway. So there's the picture and same as before, I've got all the info in and I can check the gifted box as well. I can also check the pre-wash box soon as well because I've already put the fabrics on to wash. So I don't have to wash them again if I forget. So I'm tracing out the peony dress for the first toile of the version for me. And looking at the size chart, I fall across three sizes from size 12 at the shoulders to 14 at the bust and 16 at the waist. So I'm going to try grading between the sizes and seeing how that goes. So I've traced a 12 here over the shoulders and then I've just brought it out to the 14 here under the arm to go down to 14 at the bust. And then I've just drawn a straight line between the 14 and the 16 because um, I'm going to need uh, probably a bit more ease at the waist just for my comfort and also I'm going to need a bigger size um, for my hips so I thought probably easier if I start from there and then I can just trace out the size 16 for the skirt but I'm going to make a toile and this time I'm actually going to do um, add on a bit of skirt and sleeve to make sure that it fits. So this is my first toile of the peony dress and don't say that I don't learn from my mistakes because I've done a toile with a sleeve and a little skirt on it just so I can see how the bodice is sitting. So I think the first fitting issue that I'm going to need to address is the bust. So if you look on this side, I've got drag lines above and below the bust and on this arm without the sleeve, I've got this sort of gathering here. So this indicates that I'm going to need a full bust adjustment. So I'm never really sure how much of a full bust adjustment is required, but based on the fact that the peony dress is drafted for a dressmaking B cup, which is a two inch difference from the full bust to the high bust, and I have a three inch difference, so I'm a dressmaking C cup, so I'm gonna try doing a one inch full bust adjustment to this pattern to see if that can get rid of this dragging. And then I think other than that, it fits pretty well. I'm quite pleased with the back and I don't think I'm gonna need full seat adjustment. There's no sort of drag lines or straining or anything there, which is good. The only other thing I think I'm gonna do is a full bicep adjustment. So the sleeve fits okay. It's fine if my arm is down, but if I try and move my arm, it, it's quite tight. So I'm going to try and do a full bicep adjustment on the sleeve pattern as well, just to give me a bit more range of motion. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's the two adjustments that I'm going to try for my second toile. So I'll show you my pattern pieces after the adjustment so you can see what I've changed and then I'll sew up another toile. I think I'll keep the back and the skirt and I'll just unpick the front bodice and stick a new front bodice and new sleeve on and we'll see how we go from there. So this is my front bodice piece after the full bust adjustment. So I don't know how clearly you'll be able to see it because I've used tracing paper and then squared paper underneath, but this is the bust dart. So I've added in all of this gridded bit here and 
So I cut up through the bottom of the dart to the apex, up to the armhole, and then through this dart. And I've added in half an inch here, which has then opened up this dart more. I'm not going to try and explain it because I watched a really good tutorial by Made to Sew. So I'm going to put a link to that in the description so you can go and watch that if you're thinking about doing a full bust adjustment on a pattern with a waist dart and a bust dart. But yeah, I'm going to give that a go, cut that out and see if that helps with my fitting issues around the bust. So this is my sleeve pattern that I've added an extra inch full bicep adjustment into the middle here. So as with my full bust adjustment, I used a really good tutorial from Made to Sew. So I will link that in the description as well. So now I've done my full bicep adjustment and my full bust adjustment, and I've added on the new sleeve and the new bodice. So this is my second fit check. So I'm quite pleased with this adjustment. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it because it's in a darker fabric, but it's smooth across here. I've still got a little bit here, but this is the side with no sleeve, obviously, um, and I need a little bit of room to be able to move. And then this side is looking quite good. There's just a bit of rumpling here from like the way it's been pressed and stuff. So I probably could, oh yeah, my arm is not as tight as well. So I'm pleased with that. Um, so yeah, I probably could get away with making the dress like this, but I'm thinking I might raise the waist. So the waist seam is here. I don't know if you can see it. And the peony pattern, the waist is supposed to be around one inch above your natural waist. So this is like right on my natural waist here. So I'm going to have a go at pinning the bodice just a bit shorter, sort of like this, just to see how I feel about that look, because I think it will help the skirt just skim over my hips a bit nicer and maybe make my legs look a bit longer too. So I'm going to have a go at pinning that and then I'll come back and show you what that looks like. So I've just pinned the waist seam up by one inch and I'm actually really pleased by how it looks. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but I think because the pattern is designed to sit one inch above your natural waist, the skirt kind of is straight and then flares out. So I think it does skim a lot nicer over my hips and it, it's got rid of that sort of baggy bit that was here, um, probably because the skirt was very slightly catching on my hips. So I'm gonna try and take out an inch from the pattern piece. And I think there's a length and shorten line kind of around here. So then I'll have to try and make sure it all is still gonna fit together. I really want the darts to line up because there's darts like here and also in the same place on the skirt. So I'm gonna have a fiddle about with that. And yeah, hopefully that's all my fit adjustments done. And then obviously I'll have to do the same process for my mum's dress as well, but that'll be a whole different saga. Okay, so rather chaotically, I decided to make a, another peony dress in this fabric that I bought from Sew Me Sunshine like ages ago, like two and a half years ago, because I wanted to just test out all of the alterations um, that I was pleased with the bodice before I like got into the actual fabric that Fabric Godmother sent me. I chickened out basically, but I did do it uh, like a proper version in a fabric that I really like. So I might end up wearing this for the So Yellow for Endo party, which is, um, I'll put in I'll put in the card so it's got all the correct date, but that's gonna be at um, So Me Sunshine in London uh, around the same time as the Stitch Festival. So I think it's got quite a lot of yellow in. So I've already got this just in case I don't get time to make anything for So Yellow for Endo. I love the sleeves. I've done for this one like the shorter version. So I'll model it for you in a minute. Um, so it comes basically to my, my knees on me because I am quite short. But um, yeah, that's what I'm more comfortable with anyway. I wouldn't wear something that was like kind of mid thigh because that I just feel like my bum's gonna be out. So this fabric was was quite easy to sew. It's like, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see the texture, but it's a sort of jacquard dobby. Um, and yeah, it was really easy to sew. It wasn't too shifty, even though it's a viscose. And the, yeah, about the pattern, so, the only, the only thing that I, well, no, there were two mess ups that I made. The first one was the cutting out. I managed to mess up cutting out one of the back skirt panels 
twice so I had to cut out this panel three times luckily I had just enough fabric so that was a bit scary but yeah I did manage to do that in the end and the other thing I messed up was that I put a label in but the labels in the center front <laughs> instead of in the back another floral dress but yeah I mean it's fine I, I like properly um sort of zigzag stitched it on all the way around so there was no way I'm unpicking that um, but yeah, apart from that, it all came together quite smoothly. The instructions for the peony are like the construction order is a bit different to what I'm used to. And because I had basically done partly what I'm used to and partly the instructions, my process was a bit chaotic and it all kind of came together in the end. But in the peony pattern, they get you to like attach the front bodice to the front skirt and the back bodice to the back skirt and then like join it all together later. Whereas on dresses that I've made previously, I normally construct like the whole bodice, like join the shoulders and the side seams and then, you know, join the front and the back of the skirt and then like join the top to the bottom. So yeah, I kind of had a bit of, um, bit of a mix of both. Uh, and then I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. The fit's really good. And I, I'm pleased with how it all came together. One of the things I do like about the instructions in the peony is that they get you to press the darts in different directions. So you know how earlier I was saying that there's darts in the in the bodice and darts in the skirt and I really wanted them to line up. You probably can't even really see them that well because this is quite a busy fabric, but um, they get you to press the darts in opposite directions. So normally on, on sewing patterns, you will press the darts like out towards the side seams. But on this, they get you to press the bodice darts go out and the skirt darts go in. And that means you can sort of nest the seams so they kind of butt up against each other. And it means that it's easier to get them to, to join together because they they don't just slide apart because they're they're literally like touching against each other. So I'll see if I can show you inside. So here's the dart in the bodice pressed toward, out towards the side seam, which is over here, and then the, the skirt darts are going inwards, so then they've, they have joined up really nicely. So yeah, I am, I am pleased with this. I just, I just finished it with white overlocking on the inside, because that's what's in my machine. But I feel like with most fabrics, like even darker fabrics, you can end up with like they're lighter on the inside. So using a white overlock actually kind of blends in better. And because I'm just using the overlocking to finish the seams, you're not, not gonna see it through the fabric anyway. So yeah, that's um, my approach to overlocking. I'm not afraid to change the threads on my overlocker. I find it quite satisfying actually, but it is just sort of easier. I didn't put in the shoulder puffs. So there's an extra pattern piece to give more lift to the shoulders. And I wanted this to be a bit more wearable, like day to day. So um, yeah, I haven't put in the shoulder puffs, but it is, because of the, of the gathering, they're still a little puffy. And I think it's got quite cute kind of retro vibes. Um, so yeah, I'll get changed and I'll show you what that looks like on. So here's the dress on. I'm really, really pleased with it. I absolutely love these colors on me. Um, the sleeves are really fun as well. And I'll try and put in a bit of portrait video as well so that you can see how the length is on me. So you can just see my knees there. And yeah, I just really like how it fits. The only downside is that there's no pocket, but I think because this skirt is not like very loose, like here at the top, the pockets probably would sort of affect the line of it. But yeah, let me know what you think. So I have started my catwalk version. So here it is in my project bag. I'll give you a little sneak peek. So here's, here's the sleeve. So I'm going all out on all the ruffles for my catwalk version as well. And this fabric's actually not been too bad to sew either. I thought it because of the satiny finish, it would be really slippery. But so far I haven't had any issues with it. And I was gonna do a part two where I show you like the reveal but I think I'm going to not do that for now I'm just going to work on sewing it and then if you want to see my dress 
you can come and see me on the catwalk. Um, so that is at 11 a.m. on the Thursday of the Stitch show, and it's called the Instagram Makers Catwalk. So I will be walking for Fabric Godmother, and my mum will be there as well in her pink matching peony. So that will be fun. So do say hi if you see me there at the Stitch Festival. Uh, obviously not everyone's going to be able to make it so I will share pictures uh, when I've got some nice pictures of wearing the dresses in a later vlog but yeah I thought I would just I've basically gone through the whole process of the fitting and then now I've done this one I had a few thoughts about the construction but yeah it was I would recommend it as a pattern you would need to will need to be prepared to do some adjustments if you're not a sort of standard shape but um i didn't find it difficult like doing the full bust adjustments and stuff so yeah really pleased with how this is going and yeah now i've just got to make a whole nother dress and finish off the green one that i'm working on but yeah i'm excited for the catwalk i've never done it before so yeah do come and cheer me on if you're about i will also be doing a talk about stash hub on the sunday if you're um, around that day so that's at 12 30 we've got 20 percent off stash hub this week as well because it's valentine's week and our mission is to help you fall in love with your stash so i'll put a link to the app below if you want to check it out but yeah thank you guys for watching please do like and subscribe if you want to see more from me and i'll see you around bye <laughs>